The Bavarian Alps, perfect setting for a noble convertible. One of the most exclusive cars of German production, more specifically from Bavaria. The BMW 503 convertible, a car that shines with superlatives as the first electric roof convertible in a German production vehicle. An all aluminum body, the first series with a light alloy V8. And the corresponding beguiling sound. Nineteen fifty six, the most expensive BMW to date appeared, the five hundred three and coupe and convertible versions. Both versions are available in the price list for twenty nine thousand five hundred marks. At that time, the price of a nice condo in a good location. Michael Pritchow, owner of this model since sixteen years, is still entranced. We have to go back to 1956 and what had so far emerged here after the war and then suddenly, wow, a car like this comes along with a V8 engine that has 150 horsepower? It can go 190 kilometers per hour. This is comparable to a Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing, that too a giant car. But otherwise in Germany, and I don't want to offend anyone here, there was nothing like it. That was really a spectacle, an extreme car if you want to call it that. The 3.2 liter V8 engine delivered 140 horsepower in the first version in 1956. The second version from 57, like Pritchow's model, adds a further 10 horsepower. An ultra luxury vehicle for manufacturers and movie stars. Well-heeled customers such as Count Faber Castell, Ruf August Oetke, and film actress Sonja Zeman drive a BMW 503 in the 50s. The elegant two-door takes all the gold medals in Cannes, Rome, Lisbon, and Vienna. I always like to say, this is a ladies' car, very straightforward. The technical features are nicer than with a modern car. The performance, comfort and size of the vehicle, with it you can go nicely on vacation. The car has space for four people, which is very convenient. It doesn't get any more comfortable. But in addition to the comfort of the car, it is also very sporty. The only thing that stops me in this car is the modern traffic. The aluminum cover of the bodywork is made by specialist Bauer in Stuttgart. The design doesn't follow a standard fashion from America or Italy, but is completely independent. The 503 marked a turning point in BMW style. It leads the transition from pre-war design to a sensible design language. The simple shape of the pontoon refrains from any effects and emphasizes the ideal proportion of a Gran Turismo, a long bonnet and a short rear end. BMW describes the technical basis of the big sedan with the designation 501 and 502. Frame, engine, transmission and axles are almost identical. For Michael Pritchard, the 503 is one of the finest post-war vehicles of all time. I've always been turned on by the design. A very pretty car, even the coupe. 
The convertible is of course more enjoyable because you can drive it in two versions. Also, the sister vehicle, the BMW 507 Roadster, is a great car. But this is the crowning achievement, the most beautiful BMW car that I can imagine. Even the sporty sister, the BMW 507, is described by many classic aficionados as being the most beautiful BMW ever. The BMW Roadster was developed for the American market, where European sports cars enjoy a high reputation. The design of both models, 503 and 507, comes from the pen of a seasoned personality in the automobile form environment, Albrecht Graf Goertz, who previously worked for the US manufacturer Studebaker and knows the American market exactly. The 507 is to be his undisputed masterpiece. Many celebrities drive this chic roadster. During his military service in Germany, Elvis Presley charmed female fans in the 507. Another admirer of the 507 lines, the character actor Kurt Jurgens. Today, the two-seater still belongs to the design masterpieces as a true BMW. Also, Adrian von Hoydunk, the BMW chief designer, pays the highest respect to the design. It really has this predator-like look because it runs so beautifully forward here. And this cover section, which is something we still work very hard on today with our cars, is a typical BMW cut. This car already has it, and Graf Goertz, who was a freelance designer and not employed by BMW, has done this very well. The interior of the 503 also impresses with its simple beauty and aesthetics of the 50s. Three simple round instruments embedded in a dashboard made of sheet metal and a few ivory colored buttons. A 1956 state of the art for the gentleman drivers. But the birth of the 503 comes at a difficult time for BMW. Exclusive and expensive cars are difficult to sell in post-war Germany. The people from Munich build only 139 units in five years. The Bavarian Motor Works is on the verge of bankruptcy by the end of the 50s. The rescue are small cars like the Azetta and the BMW 700. The comfort and potency of a 503, of course, don't offer this. It's a totally uncomplicated vehicle. Get in, start, step on the gas, and arrive relaxed. I also go to vintage car rallies, whether 500, 600, or 700 miles away. I travel there in one go, as I'm accustomed to do. I have no problems there, and arrived just as relaxed as if in a modern car. The engine is a masterpiece of German engineering, the world's first V8 engine made of cast aluminum. Fed with fuel by two carburetors, the engine delivers up to 160 horsepower. Even Mercedes can only offer a six-cylinder at this time. Michael Pritschau from Garmisch Partenkirchen in the Bavarian Alps, Germany, is happy with his convertible at home on the road. Even through the open top, two-door model is now one of the highest priced classics. The sympathetic guy does not see feelings of envy from other road users. 
On the road, especially on the highway, first they overtake me, then give the thumbs up. Then they go back slowly. Cameras and mobile phones are taken out of the pockets, and then I have to overtake them, and then I get overtaken again. This is always a great interplay, and really nice, again and again. It takes time until the 503 establishes itself as a desired classic car. Today, a 503 convertible in good condition costs about a quarter of a million euros.